Mr. Jesse Ronson, how's it going today, my friends? I don't know. I got the sleep in. Um, that's pretty much it. Going to start training at uh, 1 p.m. Then I got an uh, interview at 3 p.m. And then I got to walk my dogs. And I got a one-hour USADA phone call. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> After the USADA phone call, you know, last two weeks to really sharpen up. Do you usually sleep in when uh, quarantine or corona isn't actually a thing? Or is this brand new I'm to you? I would love to sleep in every day. Sleep <laughs> every day for a fighter. Like mm. fighters don't rest. Our athletes in general don't rest enough as is, and rest is super important. Like uh, when I got called to the UFC Wednesday, I literally took Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, and I'm back okay. at it today. Just resting and recovering and changing my diet, I've dropped six and a half pounds, and I feel amazing. Really? Yeah. That's like that's surprising. I didn't hear that. Sleep actually helps you lose weight, doesn't it? Then. Well, sleep, everything recovers, and you know you, yeah. you're not stressed anymore. Your body's not stressed, and when you're stressed, there's so many different kinds of stress. And once you alleviate that, like your body's just like, Ooh, flush. Mm. So let's say you have your own opinion, but what's like the regular sleep schedule or rest schedule you think an athlete should really have, in your own opinion? Uh, it, it all depends on what type of person you are. Like for me, uh, I'm not an early morning guy. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though like, I've got to get up for work you know, three days a week uh, at 6 a.m. To, to do work, but uh, not, I, you know, I took that time off all the way up until my fight's over, but every athlete's different. Like uh, Chad Priest, for example, like one of my best friends, he likes to get up like at the crack of dawn, so he would like to train at 8 a.m. Uh, or even earlier and then get his second training session in, in the afternoon, so this way he can have the evening to himself and he's in bed by like eight or nine o'clock as for me oh boy. i like my first session to be like at one or two p.m right and then have my last session at 7 30 until like nine and then go home you know relax and chill and like i go to bed midnight like 12 30 1 a.m and then i get up at you know 11 11 30 so it's pretty decent i mean yeah. personally like in my opinion i wake up at like around maybe 8 8 30 now because i don't have school or whatever but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So um, you mentioned work also, that like you're not doing that right now. Where were you actually working before you got the call to the UFC again? I was working at a company called Checkers Cleaning Supplies. So okay. every day I'd get up, you know, I'd drive to Checkers uh, home base, and then they would uh, give me the delivery truck, and then I would drive to the warehouse, I would pick up my delivery route, and I would drive all around London or St. Thomas, or sometimes I'd have to drive to Sarnia. I'd drive St. Catharines one time, like all around this area within about an hour. Just delivering uh, cleaning supplies, you know, paper towels, you know, the hand wipes, uh, hand sanitizer, the sanitizer stands, because it's freaking crazy right now. Everybody wants it, especially yeah. when things are opening. Like uh, any type of cleaning cleaning supply product you could think of, I was delivering it. And uh, yeah, it was actually a pretty decent job. You know, it's fairly easy. I just get the route, then the guys load up my truck, and I drive to where, like, it's already programmed in. So I just drive wherever they go and then unload it to whoever it is. and sign it off and done it's pretty decent a lot of a lot of fighters are into that like bartending and things like that so something new i've never heard this one before yeah you know bartending pays a lot better like one of my good friends jade he uh he's a bartender not even at a busy bar and he says he brings home like 300 dollars cash in tips a night so you know you oh, lose if you work three nights a week, you're making a thousand fucking dollars, which is more than I can get my cookies. I get paid like 21 bucks an hour at, at uh, doing deliveries at Checkers. But yeah, a thousand bucks a week ain't bad. So he, he's uh, he's living pretty good. And, you know, all you do is you stand by in a bar and pour drinks. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so let's talk about. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. I cut you off there, my bad. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it froze a little bit, so I might have went too fast. <laughs> All right, so how are you feeling for this upcoming bout if we talk about this fight? You got a, an opponent, kind of a little bit short notice, but you still got some time. How do you feel about this fight? I, I feel pretty good. You know, I, I just, uh, yesterday I watched um, his Cowboy Oliveira fight. I watched his fight in Cage Warriors where they had to call it a no contest because they were bleeding everywhere and slipping everywhere. Yeah. That was ridiculous. And then I watched his Darren Till fight. Why did I watch that Darren Till fight? Because that's the only fight I think where he fought a lefty. Mm. And it was pretty much striking the whole. So I got to see 
his reactions and tendencies with a lefty, which was very interesting. And then, uh, you know, he's not just a banger. You know, he loves to throw down, but he's also willing to engage in wrestling. Like, he does shoot for some takedown, so I'm obviously going to have to be aware of that. Everyone's like, no, nah, he's just going to stand and throw with you. That's that's not true at all. Even guys that he was beating on the feet, he's still – he'll do whatever it takes to win. And if that means, like, at the end of the round, going for a takedown, like, um, he'll go for the takedown to separate himself. So it's like, okay, well, the striking was even, but he got a takedown. Guy went around like so, but he is. It, it's it is what it is. You know, I'm used to that, and uh, uh, I'll be doing the same fucking thing. But I'll be looking to bang and slice more. So uh, I'm happy with this matchup. He'll be a little bigger than me, but uh, nothing I haven't done before. Are you usually the smaller fighter in your fights, or is this something that's going to be new to you, or or what? Uh, it uh, it changes. I haven't been the smaller fighter in a while. Okay. Uh, like TKO, I was pretty much the same size or bigger, much bigger, mm. bigger than Bakuza, bigger than Capone. Derek Gochi and I were about the same size. Um, I was same size as Dufour when I fought him. Um, I was a little bigger than Nathan Schultz when I fought him in the PFL. I was way smaller than Alex Sakin when I fought him in the PFL. Uh, I was bigger than Troy Lampson. He was taller, but I was like thicker and heavier. But yeah, it, it just depends. I'm not, all my training partners are bigger than me. So I'm the smallest guy in the room. I'm the smallest guy in the room unless it's Adam Ascenda, then he's the smallest guy in the room. Yeah, so you've had previous fights, like you mentioned. Some have even been uh, UFC fights. How how has this uh, experience helped you for your upcoming bout? Uh, I believe it's July the 25th. Well, you being there before, you know, it was a real mind fuck. And uh, it's like, it's everything you've ever wanted. And it's just like coming up like, being a East London kid, not having much growing up and like, you know, realizing your dream, being that guy to finally like do it. It was just, it, I couldn't grasp it. You know, it's like I made it there and that was it. What I should have been thinking was like, now that I'm here, this is what I need to do. But I just couldn't get over the fact that I'm here and this is it. So it took me, you know, a long time after that to realize like, yo, there's more to it than just making it there. So now that I'm back, I just feel so much more comfortable and I'm more mature. And I'll be able to handle it a lot better. And the fact that you know, I've been to Abu Dhabi twice, so that's nothing new. But the uh, the no audience, so it's going to be like my sparring sessions, like behind closed door sparring sessions. It's going to be it's going to be fun. I I'm looking for it. before it wasn't fun; it was business. Now it's going to be fun. And like when the body snatcher has fun, he starts carving and piecing up victims. Yeah. So you, you said you've been to Abu Dhabi. When you went, was it actually like the weather it's been now? I'm pretty sure it's like 40, 45 degrees down there. Yeah, I was there twice. I fought in uh, March and I fought in October. And in March when I fought, I remember we were eating uh, lunch or dinner. I can't remember at a golf course in Abu Dhabi, and it was so hot. It was over. I think it was 51 Celsius is what it was. Yeah. yeah. Like, like they they looked like heater fans, but what they do is like they spray mist. So our food was getting soggy and everything else because if they didn't spray that that little mist everywhere, like. People would die because the sun's just beating. So I looked at the temperature the other day. It was uh, 31 in London. It was 33 in Abu Dhabi. Feels like 43. Mm. So it's, it's it's just a dry heat and the sun's just beating down everywhere. It's just different, but it's it's like not that annoying humid heat. Like we get here, we get annoying humid heat. We're like, oh, yeah, enough. Like in Vegas, when it's like the dry heat is not that bad. And uh, the dry desert heat isn't that bad as long as you can find some shade. Of course. So you, I don't think you fought on an island before, have you? Well, Yaz Island isn't. Oh, well, kind of like, an island. Well, island. Like you probably throw a freaking a baseball or a football from the, the island and actually hit Abu Dhabi. Okay. So I'm pretty sure there's like a road that leads up to it. That's where Ferrari World is and the, the water park and all that stuff. It's just the UFC is like, yeah, we're taking this over. It makes sense yeah. if you cut it off. Nobody can come there, so this way everybody's just, you know, they're pretty much self-isolating and quarantining themselves on the islands. It's a genius thing to do, really. Yeah. Yeah, so what are you what are you expecting, I guess, fighting on this kind of island, I guess we can say? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, lots of seclusion, you know, nowhere to go. You can't do nothing. Like, uh, when I got the email, of, like, what's available, it's just like there's a – you can't go grocery shopping. You can't do nothing. They have, like, a, a basics – they said it's a basic – corner store or general store that has your basic needs 
So I didn't yeah. even know what that means. What are the basic <laughs> things? Probably like water, uh, chocolate bars, like, you know, some <laughs> snacks. But it's like everything that we get, like we have to order um, through the room and like they deliver it to our door. Okay. So is- I, I, I really don't know what it's going to be like. So I can't really tell you that until I get there because it just, yeah, it's like you're stuck on an island with six buildings. So it's like, do they let other people out to go get your whatever you want and then they can drive back? Uh, hmm. I don't know. They didn't say that. Okay. But there isn't, well, much, there isn't much there. For sure. I mean, there's some roller coasters and stuff like that, too. But it's probably not open, actually. Yeah, I guess it's probably not going to be. Yeah, just what they want their fighters to go on roller coasters and shit like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So last time I checked, your opponent was on the main card. Do you know if your fight is still actually going to be on the main card? I have no idea. A lot of people said I'm on the main card. But it doesn't matter to me if I'm first or last. I've been both. Um, mm. and, uh, it's the same thing. It just means I got to wait longer and that just makes me angry waiting. Like it helps the more I wait, the more I, I gain a mental edge. But yeah. the thing is fight first. It's like you get in there and you get it done and over with and you can relax for the rest of the night. But mm. I've over the years of experience, I just realized, well, I didn't just realize it. I realized it a while ago that it's like the longer you make for me, the longer I wait in the change room, it's like the more more confidence I get, the more I build my confidence, the more, more animal I can let out. It just, it makes my fights better when you make me wait longer in the back. But yeah, as far as I know, I think I'm still on the main card. Awesome. So also on that main card, we have Whitaker versus Till. That's Who are you fun. taking for that one? <laughs> Whitaker, man. I love Robert Whitaker. That guy's a fucking, he's a hero with all the stuff that he does, you know, like getting bone marrow transplanted for his daughter. <laughs> You know, everything that guy does, he's just such a good dude. I met him in Australia when Chad was fighting in Australia, and, like, he didn't know me. He knew Chad. And he came up to Chad, and he's like, hey, Chad Lepree, and with his Australian accent. And he's like, this is my buddy Jesse. Like, uh, help him out and everything. And Robert Whitaker treated me like I was his friend for 15 years. Like, he was such a good dude. I've always liked him. Uh, Darren Till, um, just one of those young, up-and-coming kids that's, like, I wouldn't want to say he's trying to be like Conor McGregor, but he's – a little bit. Trying, trying stuff like that to separate himself from the pack and it's worked you know he makes a fuck ton of money now and yeah. he's, he's finding shit and so you know he's good he's got very good striking and you know so does robert whitaker but i honestly can't tell you how this fight's gonna go but, but you're saying with whitaker so many there's so many good guys on this card like uh i think gustison's on this card too at heavyweight i believe so yeah who versus no is on this card like holy shit like all the guys that i grew up like watching and being like wow i get to find him <laughs> even though i met gustison before but you there's a lot of, again yeah my and uh a guy that i fought francisco trinaldo like we've ever since we fought we stayed in contact on facebook and instagram and he was one of the first guys when i said that i got signed he congratulated me. he sent me an instagram message and congratulated me and i said welcome back and i was like thanks and uh, he's <laughs> too so i look forward to seeing francisco he's another good dude awesome so we've uh, went over the 15 minute limit i know you got stuff to do before i That's let a- you go i want to give you the opportunity to uh, thank anyone you feel is necessary that have helped you along your journey the floor is all yours my man oh well, this is it uh i just the main guys i gotta thank is uh my manager daniel rubenstein uh for you know pulling for me and getting me this shot uh, the King Files Ramon back here is helping me with medicals. Uh, George Godoy, Colin Bakey, and uh, all my coaches and uh, training partners that are that are sucking it up and you know avoiding people for these last couple of weeks that help me train and and uh, get real sharp for this fight. Awesome, and we got to get you to leave one opponent or one message for your opponent coming July 25th. Go for it. Oh, one message from my opponent. <laughs> You better be ready for a gunfight, motherfucker. One of us is going to have to go. Awesome. So it was fun having you on, and uh, hopefully we'll be talking soon. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Thanks for calling. All right, take care. Peace out.